Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Mm. That's awesome, Steve. Is he good and that wonderful? Thank you, Steve. Wow. Something about his soul is just so cool. Welcome to Robinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ. Those in present here in the sanctuary and those online, we're so glad you are here with us today. Uh, the ministry here is thriving, especially uh, prayers for those outside washing cars. I hope you all left your keys in trust. I don't, hopefully that'll work out well. It's, it's, a, it's a moment of faith, right? Um, uh, because part of our worship community is outside washing cars, so uh, blessed to them as well. And if you're home watching the service, come on by and drop your car off, like when I'm preaching or something, you know. Anyway, um, so uh, welcome. It's so great to be with you. A uh, special welcome to those who are visiting with us today online and here in person. You are the most important people in the room. Like we have worship every Sunday at 10 o'clock, but you're here today, which is like such a special thing. And so we want to honor your presence and uh, um, say that this is a special service for you. It is Mental Health Awareness Sunday. I believe uh, that we all, if not currently under a mental health experience, we will be at one point in our lifetime, all of us. And so it's important to remind ourselves of that uh, on the Sundays like this. Um, and it's why, in our beautiful Minnesota nice kind of way, we always answer, how are you doing with fine? And underneath that fine is all the things on your bulletin cover. So take a look at that and really kind of hone in on when people say fine to you, what else may be going on behind all that. Um, there's a lot happening in the life of the church. Um, uh, there's new little envelopes in your pews called Happy Thankful. They're pink, I believe, or pink writing, right? And, um, and that's like if you're excited about something and something happened in your life that was a, a good thing and you don't want to like tell everybody in the microphone, you can put like a dollar or two dollars or ten dollars or twenty or a hundred, um, no limit, um, and, uh, and write a little bit about what that is and we'll announce that at the end and include those grateful things in our prayers. So it's a wonderful way to give and to be grateful for uh, your life and what's around you. Um, that's important. Um, also important, um, uh, in, in part of our sanctuary ongoing work, um, uh, Carol Anderson, Carrie Haugen, uh, Marsha Benchief have all been working with the Afghan refugees um, in this ministry of immigrant welcoming uh, community. Uh, so thank you for all that work. Um, be mindful of that uh, movement as you see things happening in the Friday E blast. And this week we met a Nigerian uh, man who's ex seeking asylum. He is a survivor of um, uh, a murderous spree by a local um, gang lord in Nigeria um, where many of his family members were killed. Um, but he's here in North Minneapolis. He found his way after many, many months of trying to find a way. Um, and somehow he loves the cold weather and has arrived in Minneapolis. Um, and uh, is looking forward to his big first snowfall. He was disappointed he came at the end of March and there was no big snows after that. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get him ready, I guess, right? Um, but uh, if you'd like to meet Bright, um, he'll come for worship probably in the next couple weeks. If you, um, he, he just lives a, a few miles away. And, um, uh, but if you'd like to kind of help him navigate the library or some other new thing in Minnesota, please let me or Carol Anderson know. Where's Carol? There's Carol. Um, he's a beautiful man, and, um, and we're hoping he cooks breakfast for the next One Church breakfast for us. He is a professional chef um, uh, in his homeland and uh, is just longing to be in a kitchen. And so, oh darn, right? Um, so let's get to know Bright. Um, today I want to keep us in our prayers. Um, Kathy and I are hosting... Um, by the way, I'm T. Michael Rock, one of the co-pastors. Kathy Itson is the other co-pastor. Uh, and we love working together, and we love all the activity in the building. We have two other churches that worship here. Uh, church Without Walls worships in this space. Um, it's an African-American church from the north side. Um, and Jesus is the Way International Ministries, which is a West African, a Togo, Benin-based church that worships downstairs on Sunday. And today, all three churches and their leaders are coming together for a time of relationship building and prayer and and just kind of hold us today as we gather um, in that space. Um, it'll be a powerful thing. So please do that. Um, a couple things in, in the future. Um, out to lunch bunches on Tuesday. And we're going to Lindy's at noon. So let Kathy know so she can make a reservation. Thank you very much. 
Uh, on your calendars, I know you all got your phones out because you're taking pictures and chiming on on Facebook and doing all that good stuff, right? Social media is totally welcome here in this space. Amen? Yeah, keep on going. Um, but Wednesday, May 25th at 2.30, uh, several of us are going to gather to move these paper cranes to other parts of the building. So if you feel like it's really fun to be on a ladder <laughs> or um, uh, want to play a little bit in the space, uh, please come on Wednesday at 2.30, May 25th. Not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Um, other announcement-y kind of things before I move into joys and concerns. Yes. <laughs> Sue said, look at Kathy. Okay, thank you. Um, for the summer, we have little short oh, Sunday yeah. school things that we are going to be combining with going out to the garden. The children will have a plot in the garden where next week they will be planting little seeds and then they can go weed them and stuff. So we are looking for various uh, people, anybody to sign up as uh, either a leader or a shepherd for a Sunday in the summer and the sign up sheet is right out here. We're about half full but we could, we could use some more help. And then next week we are honoring the teachers and the children will be having a little party uh, at their time. So we want to do that. A shepherd, thank you. Um, if you don't really want to lead the lesson, but you're willing to come and just help and be an extra pair of hands and guiding children and cutting out things, and um, that's what a shepherd is. It's basically like an aide. So, thank you. And Dave Getch has something. So, speaking of the garden, I was just out looking at, at what I planted, and uh, notice the rhubarb is coming up really well. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn because I know people you know, like to make stuff with rhubarb. Go check it out. You know, take some, pick the rhubarb. They're not in the children's plot. They're just, they're okay. scattered all over. Okay. It'll grow again. All right. Some of it's It'll come up. Some of it's Moral in the be up next plot. week. It's actually. kind of a weed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'm sure some of you are here for this purpose. Um, it, it was a heavy heart that we gather today. Um, it was a hard week in the life of our community in the life of a particular family in our community. Um, uh, Jim Kahn passed suddenly on Tuesday, um, and uh, he was dear to many of us. Um, and so our focus now is to um, share our love and support and care for Dawn and for Laura and Reed and their family who aren't here, Amy and Bruce and Matt and Steph and all the family. And, um, and so they're um, kind of uh, in that early stage, and so please, uh, not just today, you know, reach out, but in the weeks and months to come. Um, but again, just a, a dear, dear person for us. We're going to celebrate his life on June 4th, um, and so uh, please come if you're able to support this family. Um, and we want to hear, uh, we've been praying also for Kylie, uh, and so I invite Laura to come up right now um, and share a little bit about that. Um, uh, as you saw in our announcement for in our Friday e-blast, if you get those, um, we focused a little bit on our prayer for Jim's great-granddaughter. And so Laura, Grandma Laura will give an update. Um, Oma. Oma. I'm Oma uh, and Opa. Um, so Kylie uh, is six and a half. She has cerebral palsy and has for quite a long time. And as she's grown, um, she wears braces on her ankles and feet to try to keep her, you know, feet flat on the ground because her muscles are very, very spastic and tight all the time, so she's kind of always on her tippy toes. So on Wednesday, um, they did a, a surgery called the selective dorsal rhizotomy, which I can't ever remember it, so I had to actually look it up again. Um, but basically, they went into her lower spine and went into nerve bundles and tested nerves that were connected to these muscles and then snipped them because she's young enough to grow new messages and new neural pathways to her legs. So hopefully it it's, is a very successful um, surgery in general. So we're really looking forward to her walking next year like she should be. So um, she's doing really well. She's at Gillette's. She has a great team of uh, doctors and, and all the love from everybody. So um, she's doing well. She's doing as a six-year-old should be. She's frustrated. <laughs> she doesn't want to be in bed, but she's doing really, really well. So thank you all for keeping them in your thoughts and prayers. And um, I just want to say thank you to T. Michael. Um, he came over to the hospital on Tuesday with mom and I and spent most of the 
most of the day with us, and it was just really, really comforting to have you there. So thank you so much for all of that and for all of the prayers and thoughts for our family this week. So thank you. Laura. So that's a, a heavy thing for all of us this week. What other things, though, shall we be praying for, people or situations? Sue. I would like to ask prayers for my friend, Reverend Dennis Johnson in Illinois. He, I've known him since uh, I was in seminary. He was at one time my mother's pastor in Stockton, California. Uh, Dennis had been suffering for a number of years from Agent Orange, and he's having a very serious back surgery tomorrow at Heinz VA. And so he really appreciates uh, all any faith communities of his friends to pray for him and for the uh, surgical team and all, all the people that will be taking care of him. I, I think it's a pretty long recovery. And uh, so I would appreciate your prayers for dinner. Uh, Wendy, please. Prayers. I've talked in the past about my cousin Lynn, who lives in Missouri, and with her husband Bob, who has cancer. Um, she, he is very close to the end of his journey at this point. He has asked for Jack and I to come down there. Um, so Memorial Weekend will be down in Missouri. Um, she called yesterday and said he's no longer able to walk. Um, and he's at home and, and in hospice, but uh, it's just an unbelievable time. So please, prayers for my cousin's husband, Bob Rasmussen. Thank you. We'll, we'll pray for him and them. Emily. Hi, so um, last Sunday there was a single car accident in my hometown and the casualty of that was someone who I had worked with and grown really close to in my last three years and was also a good childhood friend of my husband's. Um, and then also in the car were his seven-year-old son and seven-year-old nephew who were both thrown from the car and now in wheelchairs. Um, he was 24 and leaves behind three kids and his girlfriend and um, so prayers for his family. Um, there is a GoFundMe going for the children's uh, medical bills that I will be sharing on Facebook. And prayers for our work family. Um, his aunts and uncles worked at the store with us, but we were all incredibly close. And so it's been really rough. Thanks. Bill, tell us about Kathleen. Good. Uh, I'd like to say that my wife, Kathleen, after eight days in the hospital, she came home yesterday, and they think they have the problem solved with her heart, and uh, but she has to go back again for uh, uh, another examination in two weeks. And uh, But she's home, and the reason she isn't here today, because the physical therapist can only make an appointment at uh, 12.30 today for her, so she would, she would have been here today. Thanks for we did pray Thanks for, her. for everybody who had concerns about her. We did pray for her last week, so thank you for letting us know how she's doing. What or who else shall we be praying for? Um, so uh, our moderator, incoming moderator, our annual meeting is next week, so yep. just a reminder of that. We got to announce that, although it's been everywhere else. Um, uh, Tristan Sanquist has COVID. There's a lots of COVID cases out there. Please continue to be careful. Um, it's very transmissible. And part of our cautiousness is that if you're going to go through the line today to shake our amazing preacher, Laura Kanata's hand, um, please wear a mask. And if, and if that's not what, something you have or want to do, just greet other people other places, and that's fine too. So just no, no judgment, but uh, if we're going we're gonna to be masked up in the receiving line after the service. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. 
and Laura, would you lead us in prayer? I just want two other um, prayers and concerns before that. Um, the baby formula shortage that's um, in the U.S. is pretty severe and significant and dangerous and especially appears to affect women who can't breastfeed for some reason or who are in poverty. So I think prayers for that, that that gets resolved and that the government takes it seriously are important. I also want to say, and this is just an encouragement um, and sort of a joy in a very sad moment, I think it's important that all of us slow down in this space and in this building and listen because I think the voices of the ancestors of this church are here and this morning when I was, I walked into the art room just because I had extra time and I turned the light on and I heard Jim Kahn. I heard his voice and just listen because he is here with us. Um, not the way we wish he was, but he is here with us. And I think that all the ancestors' voices are here. So I encourage you just to be still sometimes and listen for that. Now, um, please join me in the opening prayer. Dear God, we, we gather on this Mental Health Awareness Sunday to lift mental illness out of the shadows and into the light, to talk openly about things that are often whispered if they are talked about at all, and to confront the stigma that keeps people from dealing honestly with matters that are more common than we might care to acknowledge. Bless us with determination and persistence as we strive to create safe space in our congregation for all people, including those dealing with mental health challenges, whether fleeting or lasting. Realizing that they are us, help us forge a path forward together toward a way of being that highlights empathy, universal compassion, and care for all your children. And give us courage and wisdom to keep the conversation alive and to make it meaningful and helpful. We ask this in the name of the one who loves us all, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey. Amen. May all people see the love, care, and compassion that is God counselor and therapist. They help us heal and walk life with our siblings, ourselves, living with mental health challenges. Hear, O oh God, our prayers of hope, reconciliation, and wellness, that we may feel your presence on our journey. And we respond by grabbing onto hope. God is a holy counselor and journey partner that holds us up with the beacon of their immense love today, tomorrow, and always. Dance. 
dancing, waiting for the touch of God, waiting for the touch of God. Society's sins seep deep into your skin, every post, every pic, every inappropriate flick. The desire to be what you see, or should I say, her desire to be like the models on the screen, the perfect bodies that you tend to see on the front pages of magazines. Sunday, she stares at her stomach, one part of her body suffering from the lack of food, the pressure to be smaller, the nonstop sucking in, why won't it change? Monday, she skips a meal. One meal won't hurt, right? Tuesday, she wakes up. Still in her PJ, she walks to the kitchen, only to find a mother unimpressed simply by the time that she has awakened. Nobody likes a lazy girl. So she gets dressed and puts on makeup. Wednesday, she's tired. She struggles to get out of bed. Ding, ding, ding. Her phone's going off again and again. She looks at it. Her eyes water like April showers. She's frozen. I knew she was a slut simply because she wore a dress. Thursday, she doesn't talk to anyone today. She wears sweats and a hoodie. Her eyes are slightly droopy. You should try more. Guys would like that. I'm tired of what guys think. Friday. She wears her glasses simply just to see the words on the screen. In the hallway after class, things aren't what they seem to be. Those glasses are hot. Don't be extreme. I'm only 16. Saturday. Do you want to go out with me? Some men respond to rejection with aggressions. It's just simply a question. No, sorry. You're ugly anyways. I'm not in any pain. It's simply just a phrase. What if I had said yes? Society sin seep deep into your skin, sexualize, patronize, objectify. The standards were raised extremely high. I just want to be me.
the children please join me for children's time? Everybody. You guys doing good today? I've got a picture to show you today. Does anybody know who this is? Yeah. Yes, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Does anybody know anything about Eeyore? Yes, that is part of Eeyore's personality. He's He's always a little bit sad and sometimes a little bit grumpy, too. But do you want to know something really cool? He still hangs out with his friends, and they still play with him. They don't say, well, I don't want to play with Eeyore. He's too sad. They say, what's Eeyore doing today? I want to play with Eeyore today. And every time they have a party or they play a game, they always ask Eeyore to play with them. Isn't that nice? Sometimes people are just sad, but they still want to play with you. They still want to be friends. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, help me to be a good friend. Help me to reach out to others. And accept everyone the way I want to be accepted. Amen. Thank you. Okay, I'm not used to being up here. I like being in the back. Uh, united in spirit, inspired by God's grace, we welcome all, love all, and work for justice for all creation. Uh, for those of you who know, I wasn't supposed to be the one who spoke today. It was supposed to be Jim. And Jim had a big role in our futuring committee um, well before I even joined the committee. And he was so passionate and committed to the direction of our church. And everything that he did, he did it because he believed in it. And that included how he felt about our vision and mission statements. In our meetings, he talked a lot about what a good mission statement did and how it gives meaning to our shared experience. Mission statements are for our community, for us to uphold that shared meaning and for us to unify amongst common values. When we discussed, he would oftentimes talk about mobility worldwide as an example of what a good mission and vision is. And he talked about that meaning um, of the first part of our written uh, mission statement, united in spirit, inspired by God's grace. Last week, we were asked this really great question about the meaning of those words. Should we take out the word God? Isn't there enough inspiration alone in the word grace? And do these words deter outside community members from coming and being a part of our community? For myself, as a Indian, Guyanese, femme being, um, my faith journey has been quite nuanced and very nonlinear. Um, I was raised in a Lutheran church like many of you. I, at some points I tried connecting in my roots of Hinduism, um, and there were various times when I fell out of my faith altogether. And now I mostly consider myself to be spiritual, and I just want to be around people who share those same values and who act good and do good. Um, when I found myself at RPUCC, it was after a time when things were really challenging for me, but you all welcomed me and you loved me. 
Um, and I saw the ways that you were all united in spirit and inspired by God's grace. And actually, Jim and Don were some of the first people who uh, came and welcomed me and opened the door to your faith community. And so it seems to me that the spirit and direction that you are all moving in, it doesn't stop there. There's so many faith communities that are divided on many topics of race and gender, and there's still a lot of debate on same-sex marriage. Uh, but while those issues may divide, they don't divide this group of people. And they're things that are uniting this group um, in the spirit of community, love, justice, and God's grace. So as someone who, um, you know, I'm still not necessarily a part of the UCC, and so I might be considered an outsider, those words didn't deter my interest in being a part of your journey and being a part of this community. It's the thing, the, the way that you enact those beliefs and values are the things that make me want to keep coming and it seems to me like it's an honest and true reflection of the way you are as people. So I hope that next week when you come to discuss the um, mission, uh, you keep these thoughts in mind. And I uh, look forward to all of the work that we will all continue to do. So thank you. Of course, if you know, Ash Suku is um, our communications uh, director and um, so many gifts, and we're really pleased. Kathy and I found her and called her and with the help of the congregation uh, to be in that role. And, and when we started the Future Committee, Ash said, well, I'm, if I'm the communications director, I need to be involved in this futuring thing and <laughs> so I can share the story, right, in all of our ways. So we're so blessed by her presence. Um, it's Mental Health Awareness Sunday. It means we should probably have a little prayer to kind of hold this space and to recognize um, the, de the depth of that ministry is not unique to our tradition, which is always holding the both and in, this, in the midst of all of our journeys. And to be very clear that um, uh, this is a place of joy and a place of grief at the same time all the time. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the ministry and the ministry team that helps us, helps guide us in our mental health awareness journey. These individuals come together and plan and create and envision and cry and laugh together, and they find a way to guide our congregation in this ministry. We surround them with our prayers. We give thanks for the leadership of Reverend Laura Kanata and the many gifts she brings into this ministry. And so now may all of us be surrounded by the hope, the grace, the suffering, the joy, the challenge of all that you are present for. Amen. Thank you, T. Michael. As T. Michael said, today is Mental Health Sunday. It's a day for reflecting on mental health and bringing awareness of those lives who have been touched by various conditions. Mental illness affects about one in four adults and one in 10 children, and these numbers have gone up since the pandemic. Mental illness is often feared or shamed in our society, but with one in four, it's more common than people think, if you count out in the pews, every fourth person. To help fight the stigma, today's sermon is on depression. Depression is just one of the many mental illnesses out there. Some symptoms include changes in sleep, either too much or too little. Changes in appetite, eating way more than you should or eating way less. Having a hard time focusing, loss of interest in activities that normally bring you pleasure, a feeling of being slowed down, like you're walking through mud, tiredness, and many others. 
There are multiple ways to describe, define, and explain depression. One definition would be sadness taken to the extreme. Sadness is a core emotion, like joy or fear, and it's a normal part of the human story, and therefore, it is biblical. Even Jesus wept. There are many examples in the Bible of sadness. The Psalms, especially those attributed to David, are full of emotions, and not just emotions, but emotions to the extreme. The highs are very high, and the lows are very low. Similar to some of our friends who have bipolar disorder. David isn't just happy and full of praise. He screams his jubilation from mountaintops. He isn't just sad. His despair sends him to the depths of Sheol, the land of the spirits of the dead in the Hebrew Bible. Some examples of depression in the Psalms include Psalm 6 through 7. I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Psalm 6, 6 and 7. I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Psalm 13, 1 through 2. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Psalm 13, 1 and 2. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Psalm 22, 1 through 2. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Psalm 22, 1 and 2, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Psalm 42, 3, my tears have been my food day and night. Psalm 42, 3, my tears have been my food day and night. And night. Psalm 69, 1 through 3. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. Psalm 69, 1, and 1 through 3. Save me, O God, from the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the floods sweep over me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. I drench my couch with my weeping. My tears have been my food day and night. Can you hear the anguish in those words? Let's compare the Psalms with some modern day experiences of depression. For some people, depression is deep despair. It is grief prolonged, and it is suicidal ideation. One person describes depression like this. To me, depression feels like there is fog in my brain. Words spoken to me take time to cut through the fog to reach my comprehension, and my words must cut through the fog to be spoken. Like fog, sometimes it is best just to stay home. For others, depression is encompassing. It is not just the sensation of sadness, but an assertion that the sadness is all there ever will be. It is an inability to experience lasting joy or make even the smallest decisions due to the feeling 
of pointlessness. For some people, it hurts just to be. In 2016, anxiety and depression got the best of me. So I checked myself in for a stint in the hospital. This is how I felt. Depression is like being at the bottom of a deep, dark well. I knew of the existence of the sun, yet I couldn't see it, couldn't feel its warmth. I was alone for the most part. People may pop into my well for a short visit, but they could leave. And for me, there was no way out. No footholds, no ladder, nothing. I was trapped in my sorrow and my fear. I could not, no matter how hard I searched, find a way out of this well. I knew there was one, but for the life of me, there was nowhere to be found. I felt like I was slowly drowning in an ocean of despair. Waves would pull me under, and every time they did, I wondered if this would be the time I didn't make it back up. So I called T. Michael. And many others. And many others. <laughs> many, many others. It wasn't others. just me. <laughs> so what ministry is about is receiving those calls from the dear ones we love and sitting with, with whatever pain they're experiencing. And one of the interesting things of all this is that you have to understand that when you're in that pain with someone, that it's not your pain, right? To, to be present for somebody else's experience in their depression, um, whatever, or grief or whatever, is, is a real thing. Uh, when I thought about doing this sermon of depression, I, um, it wasn't like I immediately thought of Kathy, but I thought of Kathy as a support person for me and how we support each other in this ministry. And as we got to know each other in our relationship, um, it was clear that we had some similar views of the world. And, and part of that view is around um, issues like mental health awareness and care of the environment and, and deep issues of justice and, and the ability to hear another's pain. And there's a lot of theological talk about kind of writing the via negativa, right? You're, you're like writing that place of where they're suffering and going into that, that dark place. Um, and a lot of times churches choose not to do that and they just follow the via positiva. We're just always gonna talk about the praise of God and the, and the good things and the joy. And neither one of those actually fulfills the human experience because um, I, I, we were gifted with a, a leader in the Minnesota Conference that, that described the, the via funcativa, right? Which is in the middle. It's going back and forth between the joy and the sadness and the sorrow and the possibility and the hope and the suffering. And that via funcativa is right where Kathy and I got to know each other. <laughs> like in those lunches and all those places as we, uh, you know, and we never dreamed of being a consolidated church when we were just being friends, right? We were just supporting each other in our ministry. And the, the whole idea of consolidation came way, way later, and it was mostly by the Parkway congregation that brought that word to us, right? And so, but it was the relationship that mattered. And being able to hold that both-and experience on the via funcativa that allowed us to carry hope into places like that so, so we can sit with each other. And I got to say, Laura's been there for me as I've been there for her. It's, it's not just one-sided, right? We do that for each other, and that's what kind of brings that up. And, and um, in the spiritual direction world that I teach and that I uh, practice in, in kind of my side gig, my side hustle, um, <laughs> is a wonderful way of the apophatic tradition. It's an ancient, ancient tradition started by the desert mothers and fathers. And, and the ability to hold the both and in a way that to, takes away dualism. And so I, I, want to, I want to try this as a spiritual practice today um, before Laura finishes the sermon and we hear more from the psalmist because I think the psalmists travel this deep emotional place to the extreme because they can hear both sides of this experience. And so um, we often say in, in the inclusive language world, you know, um, try on the language, right? Try on God is Father in all the ways that is true or not true for you, right? Kind of just imagine all the different ways that that image is e either healing or not in that relationship. And then try to say, God is not father 
and how all that is true or not true for you. And then God is not not father. Hold that language. God is not not father. And all the ways that can be true. And that's the, 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 the way that takes away this dualism, this, this black and white thinking. Um, and we can do that with, with God is mother. And all the ways that is true. Kathy preached beautifully last week on all the ways God is mother to us. And then you can say God is not mother. And all the ways that can be true for you. But finally, come to that place of God is not, not mother. And we find a deep relationship there in that, in, in that just possibility of, of, of truthfulness in this language. And so when we're in a mental health situation, we can say, I am depressed. And think of all the ways that can be true for you. Or not true. And then you can try on the language, I am not depressed. And that can be true or not true for you as well. In all the different ways, that's true. And then go to the, I am not, not depressed, <laughs> allows for that possibility and the inklings that may be there. And you notice the symptoms and the signs in a way that weren't there previously when it was so dualistic. Right? And so find a way in this language to embrace the via funcativa. The not, not, holding both joy and suffering, both the, the truth of all the possibilities of your journey and the way to find healing, to doing something with your depression is the goal, not just to be in the depth of that Sheol experience. Because thankfully, except for one exception, all the Psalms end moving out of that grief. And so just a um, the one exception is they bash the children's heads against the rocks, and we're not going to, that's, the, the, we're not going to, we'll talk about that in Bible study. Kathy, that's your own, so. <laughs> but, go ahead, Laura. So, these moments of depression are extremely real. They hurt. They tear at your very being. And sometimes they even make you question everything. And yet, for every instance of despair in the Bible and in life, there are instances of hope. You see, you may feel alone at the bottom of that well, but God is always there. It's just when you're stuck, sometimes you can't see them. God is in that well holding you while you sob. God is pulling you up from the depths of the ocean, clearing a way through the fog. You are not alone, even if it feels that way. And I'm not just saying this, it's not just pretty words. I have felt it with the people who have sat with me. I have felt God's presence. This is also not just experience, but it's from the Bible. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. Psalm 42, 5. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise them, my Savior and my God. Psalm 42, 5. Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise them, my Savior and my God. Psalm 9, 9 through 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9, 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 55, 1 through 2, and 16 through 17. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Every morning and noon, I cry out in distress, and God hears my voice. From Psalm 55, listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. 
My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and God hears my voice. Psalm 107, 14. The Lord brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Psalm 107, 14. The Lord brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Psalm 11, or 116, 3 through 9. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, they saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 116, 3 to 9. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, they saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 30, line 5. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. God never leaves your side, not for an instant. I truly believe this. God holds you as a child in their arms as you weak. As you weep, sorry. I know this because I have felt this. I have felt God's presence wrapped around me in the arms of my loved ones, in a cool breeze, in friends and family. In the midst of a moment of chaos, you can feel utter calm wash over you. Who is that but God? Maybe a child smiles at you and brings that tiny little spark of joy. Or you see a deer out in a field. God is hope, and hope presents itself in a myriad of ways. I found hope in the connections with people I've met through this church. I have found hope in my family. I have found hope through people believing in me when I couldn't believe in myself. I have found hope, and you can too. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. This is worth remembering. When you are stuck in a nasty bout of depression, it feels like that's all there is. But if you pause and take a deep breath, you'll realize you felt this way before, and it didn't last forever. You've gotten through these feelings in the past, and you will again. Use your resources, whatever they are. Take your medication, call your doctor, reach out to your pastors. And if you can't be your own light in the darkness, that's okay. Let someone else shine for you until you can reignite. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.
Please join us in the community prayer. To the God of many names and no name, we are your people, touched and drawn to your presence among us. When we feel nervous and the walls close in, and too many people are too close, and everyday noises are too loud, and every light is too bright, and all we can do is plan our panicked escape from the situation we are in. God knows. When sadness and depression pull us down like a lead weight, making it hard to move, hard to concentrate, hard to find motivation, hard to be alive, just hard. When we can't help but burst into tears and we learn the difference between crying and weeping and the weeping won't stop and we lose hope that we will ever feel hopeful again. When information comes at us and blasts that we can't make sense of, and it seems like someone keeps randomly changing the channel when we try to focus, and it feels impossible to learn or keep up with what's going on around us. God help us. When we get so revved that we want to take on the world and leap tall buildings and outrun freight trains and take on too many major projects at once and stay up all night for days on end, and the only thing we know we can't do is slow ourselves down until we crash out of control. When voices inside our minds constantly intrude upon our lives and when they won't stop and they confuse our thoughts and make it impossible to be with other people, let alone have any kind of real conversation. God help us. When all we can see is a world that is out to get us and we get stuck believing that some grand conspiracy is designed to hurt us or ruin us or kill us and we believe that our only only our constant vigilance can save us, if anything can. God help us. When we simply don't know how to touch other people, think our thoughts are, God help us. When we feel completely isolated and alone, longing for social connections we cannot make. God help us. When we feel utter despair and we see more reasons to end our lives than to keep living. God help us. When we strive with best intentions to stop addictions that are ruining our lives, and we try our best again and again, but we can't resist, and we end up over and over again at the same helpless place that we would give anything to avoid. When our thoughts jumble and things we thought we knew slip away, and when we feel helpless, powerless, and scared for the moment and for the future, Our intention, O oh God, is to break the silence on mental illness so that those who live in the isolation of being stigmatized can find a safe space and a welcoming people so that the fullness of life can be enjoyed. As we embrace those who live with serious depression, bipolar anxiety, and panic attacks, eating disorders, or other mental illnesses, we pray that our actions and our words can be a comfort and a source of help for each of us. Guide us, open us, instill wisdom, and lead us on the path of wholeness for your name's sake, amen. And let us pray in unison a special rendition of the Lord's Prayer for Mental Ill Health Awareness Sunday. God, who is around us and within us, awaken us to your presence on earth and heaven and every place in between. Give us the daily bread of strength to share our stories and the willingness to listen to the stories of others. Forgive us for the impulse to isolate ourselves and being silent or walking away from those who isolate us. Guide us on our mental health journeys and lead us to the support we need. We are your people and you are our hope now and forever, amen. Um, let us pray for the call to offering. On this Mental Health Awareness Sunday, we celebrate the many gifts of our community and share them with the wider world. Today's Loose Change offering are, offerings are dedicated to the National Alliance on Mental Health, NAMI, Minnesota branch.
We have three happy and thankful offerings. The first is from Lisa Linda Smith. Good to see you. I'm so very thankful for the life of Jim Kahn, aren't we all? From John Hudson, happy and thankful for the gift of my Minnesota family, T. Michael, Morgan, Phoenix, and Bridget. And from Morgan, she is so happy and thankful for Phoenix turning 18 yesterday. Amen. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Dear God, we offer up these gifts to be of service to help our siblings who are struggling in whatever ways they struggle. We give these gifts with joyful hearts, knowing that when we are struggling, others will look out for us. Amen. that says you are enough comfort me may the love that says you are loved embrace you this day and every day amen 